you know, the creationism stuff is a really good example where we tend to assume that the Bible and the biblical writers were writing what they write to answer our questions. Okay. Amen, <laughs> like writing, brother. Like they're writing to us. No, they're writing to the people that were alive when they were alive. So take us back 3,000 years, maybe even 5,000 years. Um, and we are before the Greeks and we're not platonic. And, you know, get us, get us into, you know, in your book, you, you talk about how the, the writers of Genesis in particular had a view of God that I don't know that we are that familiar with. Yeah. Help us unpack that. Uh, A lot of this discussion can sound really complicated, but it's actually really simple. You know, you, if you're someone living five, you know, 10,000 years ago, whatever you're, you're, you have some really simple beliefs. You know, you, you wonder about, and you point this out in your lectures too, you know, all these, this big picture stuff. How did we get here? Who's responsible for this? I know I'm not. And <laughs> my wife isn't, you know, my mate or my brother. I mean, he's not. Um, <laughs> so there, there's got to be some, something else going on here. And so if you can't attribute, if you can't get answers from, from what you experience with your senses, you're very naturally going to gravitate to something beyond you. So, you, you know, you, you have this assumption, something bigger than me is responsible in some way for all this stuff, including me. It's a very simple thought, but it, it's, it's, it's equally profound, but it, it's very simple. And you, you, you have another thought. Well, you know, in this world, life is kind of better if it's organized. You know, it just kind of works better as opposed to chaos. Yeah. So I'll bet that, whatever other entities, the you know, deities, whatever, uh, that inhabit this spiritual world, this, this other world, this otherness, they're smarter than us. So if we can see that order is good, they probably can too. Hmm. They would probably prefer order and hierarchy, you know, than just pure chaos. So again, it's a very simple thought. And yeah you know, the ancient person is going to be thinking in these modes. And so they're going to try to describe how it is they're conceiving these things through the vocabulary they have. And the vocabulary they have is naturally linked to what is accessible with their five senses, the things that they experience. And so they're going to be using, you know, metaphors like the planting metaphor for where babies come from. Now they know what sex is obviously, but they're going to use a planting metaphor because they're used to that. You put something in the ground, it grows. Okay. You know, life comes from the earth. Uh, Well, you know, I put the seed in this woman and life comes, you know, she has a baby. So it's a very natural, you know, metaphor for how we get this baby. You know, why, why do we have these weird laws in the Old Testament about seminal emissions and menstruation and blood and, you know, you're rendered ritually unclean? Well, it's because if you lose enough blood, you're going to die, okay? And if you die, then, then you're not alive. So the, God is the source of life. So we're, we're, we're going to view blood and the thing that makes babies as something, you know, from God that God gives us so that we stay alive. Hmm. Life force versus death. And, and since life is associated with the deity, if you lose one of these fluids, you're going to be, you, you can't enter his presence for a while. Okay. You know, again, these are really simple ritualistic thoughts that reinforce, again, a certain set of ideas. Now, when it comes to the, to the unseen world, you know, a circle back to your question here, you know, we, we assume that, you know, we have this other reality and that it's organized. And so what the biblical writers do, and not just biblical writers, but the ancient Near Eastern you know, people who are, you know, have given us their, their literature, is they organize that other world. They use typically metaphors of royal court language. 
you know, mm. divine council, court. God is a king. The king has courtiers. He has an entourage. The, the family members get the most important positions. You know, it, it, there's just this kind of thinking. And so when, when the biblical writers are describing, you know, how this other world runs, they're going to use the language at their disposal. What else would they use? Language that isn't at their disposal? I mean, it just doesn't make any sense. They're, they're, not, they're not downloaded with some special knowledge uh, to be able to express this. And I, I always get into this when, I, when we talk about you know, creation and evolution. I'm on the biologos side. Um, and and that's, this is why I was interested in, I honestly, I, I don't see any problem with your view, Perry. <laughs> good. That's good. I don't, I don't care if you front load the design. <laughs> it just it doesn't matter to me. Okay. I mean, because credit is given where it's due. Mm -hmm. that, that's, that's good. Okay. Mm -hmm. But, but we tend to, and you know, the creationism stuff is a really good example where we tend to assume that the Bible and the biblical writers were writing what they write to answer our questions. Okay. Amen, <laughs> like writing, brother. Like they're writing to us. No, they're writing to the people that were alive when they were alive. You know, otherwise, you know, we, 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 this is what I call, a lot of Christians have what I call the X-Files view of inspiration. That is, you know, the, the prophet wakes up one morning and he's making breakfast and all of a sudden he's zapped, you know, and his mind goes blank. He uses the, loses the use of his arms and hands and something happens and he wakes up and he looks down and there's a scroll there and he goes, man, I can't wait to read what I just wrote. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> you know, like, like we, I, I have said it to many audiences, if you strip the humanity out of this doctrine we call inspiration, you undermine it. Because what you actually find in the text doesn't conform to this picture. You know, if, if everybody's getting downloaded with advanced knowledge, well, then why, doesn't, why isn't there a biblical Hebrew word for brain? You know, like as the seat of emotions and rationality. You know, why do we get kidneys and reins and heart and all the, you know, why yes. is that? You know, I, I, we make these assumptions about what's going on and they just don't hold. If if the if the Holy Spirit's behind you know the, the prophet you know whispering in his ear every word I put a comma there no use a semicolon you know is it this this dictation or or sort of pseudo dictation because lots of people don't want to they want to deny that they view the dictation view but their view really isn't much distinguishable from it but then yeah. why do we have you know, like in the first three verses of Ezekiel a change from the first to the third person mm. the Holy Spirit can't make up his mind who he is. Am I the first person? Am I the third person? You know, it, it just doesn't make any sense. And, and literally every page of the Bible has something that defies a mechanistic X-Files view of inspiration. All of it. And that, that's, a, that's a serious problem. So, you know, what we have, what the Bible is, is an ancient document. It describes the world of the writers in the language they have at their disposal. It describes their conception of the other world, again, using their own language and their own experience, their own metaphor to express certain ideas. 